Oh. Don't you love starting a video off with that? About to go start my video, show you guys the truck and just step in a nice pile of wiener dog poop. But here's what I was trying to show you guys. Look at this. The battle wagon, what I've been on the road for months and months and months on, I finally, finally, finally got around to cleaning my car. Just look at this. It is like that took forever. All of this, it's like, it's totally new. It's totally cleaned. I was driving around the country all fall and then it was a long ice fishing season. And then I was driving to Texas and all that. And I drove back from Texas and I looked at my car early today. I'm like, my car is absolutely disgusting. So it was, I cleaned it all completely out. There's some of the garbage and I was going to get it detailed, but I've never gotten my car detailed before. And I didn't realize that like most detailing places were like three to four weeks behind. So I was like, screw it. I don't really want to pay $200 anyway. I'm just going to do it myself. So I vacuumed the carpets. I shampooed the carpets. Like wipe down like all the vinyl like everything I cleaned in this car it took me hours it's not exactly spotless of course like I didn't do a professional job by any means but it's good I mean look at the space this is why I love the bourbon right there so much space for stuff and it was way too messy for way too long I really needed to take care of it look at this this summer when I was sleeping in my car this is how I could do it like there is so much space kind of an awkward camera angle but the reason I'm showing you guys this is that it's cleaning day. I did a video about this last year and it was like a rod reel arsenal and a boat tour. And I'm going to be doing the same thing right now because a lot of things have changed with my equipment. Not so much my boat, but you guys always love seeing boats, right? The bourbon's all happy now. 210,000 miles and she is still ripping and rolling. The Stratus is very, very much in a resting period right now. This boat, as you guys can tell, it is, it is a mess. Now what this boat has been through in the last couple months, I fished I traveled around Texas and fished for like, I think about a week, maybe a week and a half in November. And then I left it in a storage lot in North Dallas until maybe like a little over two weeks ago. And then a lot of the last two to three weeks, I've been doing the same thing and traveling around Texas fishing in this boat. And as you guys know, like Texas is a bunch of amazing lakes, but it's a huge state. If you wanna fish lakes, it's like totally normal to just like pick up, go drive three hours one way to a lake, fish the lake all day, then drive three hours back. So. A lot of road time on this trailer, a lot of road time on this boat, and I'm about to go to Ohio again, so it's not exactly going to be clean quite yet. I might sneak in a cleaning about on this tomorrow, but this guy needs a deep, deep clean before I use it again, just the same way that the Suburban needed a deep clean. But let me kind of show you guys everything about this boat. Again, it's very dirty right now, but she still works like a champ. Boats are meant to be used, right? They're meant to get dirty. Just a very, very basic trailer wise. Just a very basic single axle trailer. It's only an 18 foot boat. Here's the back of the boat, the business end. We got a three bank charger right here. All the batteries are charged up. We got two troll motor batteries, a cranking battery, oil reservoir right there, and then the big gas tank right here. Gas tank is pretty empty too. I've been meaning to put a lot of non-ethanol fuel in there. If you guys are like new boat owners looking to get a boat soon, I'm sure many guys that have had boats for a very long time can attest to this. If you have a marine engine, it's much better to put non-ethanol gas in your engine if you can find it. It's fine to put ethanol gas in there and then like put a treatment in there too, but you run into problems when you put ethanol gas in your engine and then just let it sit and all the gasoline in your engine starts to uh, separate a little bit and then it gets into your engine. I'm, I'm not a scientist by any means. I just know that if you let ethanol gas sit in your engine, it is bad, it is not good. So let's check out what's in the boat a little bit here. Nice comfy bench seating. You don't really see it in bass boats nowadays and it's a shame. Highly, highly underrated. I've got this tackle bag drying out. This just shows you guys how much of a mess this is right now. So we're just gonna close this and take it step by step. Oh, I forgot about this. This, and this right here. I want you guys to go down and leave a comment right now and guess what you think caused those stains. It was an animal, it's not my animal, and it was running around the boat, property of John B. Makes it kind of obvious, but I need some stain remover for that. It's not his fault, it's just a puppy. So from the top, we have no brand new Ultrex or anything like that. We have a 65 pound thrust, right 65? Yeah, 65 pound Fortrex. She does the job with good batteries. This is completely secured and locked in. This graph, of course, does not work at all. Then you got some basic switches up here for to bring the motor up and down. Bag of soft plastics that's out drying. Some line attached to it that's in there. Again, I'm not surprised. This boat really needs a cleaning. This is a bag pretty much full of little finesse worms of all colors. It's a good bag right there. Let's unlock this compartment because they were locked. I kept staying in hotels. 
Ooh, a lot of dust just went around there. Here's a graph that I never even really use. This is like an HDS Gen 2. Here's a throwable or like a seat cushion. And then we got a bunch of life jackets in here for when I have a lot of people in the boat. What is this? A Guggen Squad sweatshirt. That is 100% parrots from the summer. Yeah, see, like, that's unacceptable. There's some dust in there. This has not been cleaned out since the summer. So in here, basic stuff, no fishing stuff goes in there. Now this big deep compartment right here, this is where I've really had all the fishing stuff. I went to Bass Pro before I went to Texas. Got a bunch of bad fishing lures in there. Now this looks very dusty right now. It's honestly not that bad. Like all the boxes are organized. Like there's a bunch of square bills in here. There's a jig box. There's a walleye crankbait box. But all the line floating in the bottom, like miscellaneous little bags of, bags of soft plastics. That's all stuff that throughout like the year when I'm fishing, I'll go to Bass Pro or something like Dick Sporting Goods, buy a couple things and it'll just get thrown in. And then uh, I'll just constantly be fishing and traveling and not really take the time that I should be to organize everything. So this box is going to look very neat, shiny, and brand new in a couple weeks here. When all my tackle is organized, it's gonna go in here. I mean, it's like a, a huge space. It goes up. There's more than enough room to stack all the tackle you could ever need. And here is a rod locker. There's a couple rods in here that I haven't really touched since the fall. A couple cliff bars, those are essential, some leaves. Now, again, this is an 18 foot boat. It's not the biggest rod locker, it's just all carpet and keeps going up. Then in here is a miscellaneous. It's just, I can you can put ice in here and have it be a cooler. You can put garbage throughout the day in there. A oh, very basic dashboard here. Again, we had a little graph in here that we took out. Here's where the graph goes. A little power switch, turn everything on. This is for the live wells. Yep, that's for live wells, that's a bilge. And um, that's pretty much all you need, live wells, bilge. Right there again is to control the live wells. This again, like I said, things that need to be done, this needs to be screwed back in. Some more space down there, and there's some extra tackle, and there's a glove box filled with a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. You got like a big Lee's water chopper. Finally put a scale in here. There's some, probably the most important part of this entire boat in any boat. You need this, trust me, you need that. There's slots right there for someone that you're fishing with for their rods. Again, the bench seating is just so huge. And here, oh, that was dusty. There's a spare prop in there in that box. Just in case something happens in that prop, there's a spare one in there. Then right there, you got your two big live walls. I don't know how big a bass I can put in there. I've never had a problem, but there is a divider in the middle here. So I do not think I can put some true Texas 10 pound giants in there, but it does the job for fishing up north. Very last compartment here is, uh, yeah, as you can see what's in there, this is a miscellaneous bag, 100%. There's like a tow rope. There's mold on that package, so you know that's been in there for a while. And then on the business end, this is what makes the whole boat go around. An old Yamaha VMAX 150, that engine is an absolute tank. That specific model, I cannot say enough amazing things about it, and I've never really had a bad experience with the Yamaha in general, but that specific one, just phenomenal with gas mileage, phenomenal with oil consumption, never had a single problem with it starting, anything like that. It is a two-stroke, she's kind of loud, but she's an absolute tank. So that kind of does it for the boat. I wish I would have shown you guys when it was like really clean, but I wanted to nail this video out and I'm about to leave again. Now let's get into what I'm actually going to be catching fish with this season. The rods and reels I'm going to be using. As you guys know, I was using a lot of like really old Shimano reels for a while, but I got those serviced. Those are all beautiful again. I'm going to be fishing with some new rods as well. <sighs> well guys, I think a lot of you that live in the Midwest, you, uh, you feel my pain right now. Cause this, 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 all this white stuff on the ground, it's April 9th. I'm up in Chicago and there's an inch of snow on the ground on April 9th. This is disgusting. Obviously this has inhibited a lot of the spring fishing opportunities this time of year. I don't really know where I left off in this video. Now to be honest with you guys, I think I filmed the first part of this video like a little over a week ago to be honest. I've uploaded once in like the last eight or nine days and that is like the least I've ever done on this channel. There were just some things that happened in my life where I needed to take some time, get refocused and now I am more charged up, more ready than ever to bang out some amazing content for you guys. But I need to finish this video and show you guys what I have behind me right here. Now as you guys can see in the title of this video, I named it New Rods and New Reels. Now for the last like couple of years now, you guys know I would always use very old equipment. It was all quality equipment made extremely well, but it was old. It was older G Loomis rods for the most part and really old Shimano reels. The reels are still the same. 
But you guys know I said in a video like maybe a month and a half ago, I got all my real service this winter and the guy that did it did an absolutely beautiful job. Mark at Days Room Repair, you are a wizard with reels. If any of you guys have any reels that need like service, you need some parts done, you want to get some upgrades on them, like let's say some Boca bearings, you need to contact this guy. I'll leave him down in the, in the description. He does amazing work. He's like backed up for weeks. He has like clients that come back to him every year, year after year. He's got guides that go to him. He just does phenomenal work with the reels. Now we'll get to the rods in a second, of course, but these are pretty much all the reels I have. They're old Shimano Bantam Curados and older Cronarch 51 MGs. These reels are all from 2003 all made in Japan, they're, they're absolutely amazing and Mark did a phenomenal job fixing them up for me. These will be incredible for years to come. Now the bigger announcement I have for you guys in, in this big jumble of rods back here, I am finally working with favorite rods now. You guys know that I've been friends with all the Guggens for a while. I've been exposed to these rods for a long time now. I've used them for a long time. I'm in a very comfortable place now that I know they're an excellent product. They're amazing rods. Like I said, I've used them for a long time. I've got to use a lot of different models. Most of the ones I have in the car right now are like bigger Phantoms. Let's see, we got a couple Summits. These are absolutely beyond incredible rods. I use them in my Texas trip. Just, I mean, they're the lightest rod ever made, basically. They're all one. They're absolutely incredible. You got to check those out. Got some spinning rods in here, some jackhammers. Favorite was kind enough to give me some favorite reels to go along with the rods because I don't really have many spinning rods. We've got some newer favorite sticks that I can't wait to try out, like this Emperor rod. This looks pretty freaking sweet. Then you got your classics, the Big Sexies, the Phantom, another Summit, a couple other rods. This is a rod that was super cool. Let me take this one out for you guys. Now this rod right here, I actually, a couple weeks ago when I drove home from Texas, I went to go visit Winston and the whole favorite team. That's how I got all these rods. And he gave me this super awesome rod right here. It's a Chicago Cubs World Series like memorabilia rod. I hope that focus right there, but it says like Chicago Cubs world champions. You guys know that Favor got an actual licensing contract to make all these MLB rods for every single one of these teams. So this was something really awesome that I very much appreciate, Winston. Very much appreciate you for giving me this. But yeah, I know that I know this video had like a really weird delay to it, but that was a big announcement I had for you guys. All my reels got fixed by Market Days Reel Repair, so no longer will you guys hear bad bearings, like screaming reels in my videos. And I got all new rods, all new amazing rods. I've got some ideas. I've been talking with favorite, and I, I'm, I'm trying to bring some rods for you northern dudes, some like northern specific rods that I think the industry is really lacking right now. All in all, I'm just extremely excited for the season to start. I mean, it's almost the middle of April. We should be crushing the LMBs in Illinois right now, but there's freaking snow on the ground. There's snow everywhere in the Midwest. Everywhere is just way, way, way too cold, but it's going to warm up soon enough here. We're almost a month into spring, so it's going to happen eventually, right? So thank you to each and every one of you for watching. Thank you for your time. I'm a little cold here because it's 30 degrees. I'm going to go back inside and edit this video for you guys. Appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for the next one.